So my mother, Norma, beautiful name, uh, she had Alzheimer's for 14 years, which is a long time. And for the last six years, she was in Colton Care Homes. First of all, in Winchester, and then um, once Linden House was up and running and properly established, uh, we moved her here to Lymington, which was her hometown, and she lived here until she died. She was a very gracious, elegant lady. She was fun. She always seemed to be happy. She was quite calm, um, but, but had a great sense of humour. And she always wanted to help people. She was always kind. And she, this is something that kind of relates to being here, is that she was, she was sociable. But she was also always very self-sufficient. So in her later years here, when she spent more and more time in her room, um, she, surrounded by comfort and calm and gentleness, she never was visibly distressed, which of course was a great comfort to us that she seemed relatively happy. The, the problem is you don't really know how somebody feels. You can only um, go by the behaviour that they're manifesting at the time. And so the staff here could make her laugh, um, make her giggle, and she certainly seemed to have quite a lot of happy moments until al almost the end. It took me quite a while to realise that it is completely pointless to keep asking, to keep, to keep telling your mother that she said that before. Um, you have to get into the moment of answering a question or asking, a, acting as if you're in the moment, basically, is the key to it. And the staff learn to do that right from the beginning. So they don't ask those questions which would require memory to answer. And it took all of us a while to learn it, and I think a lot of people never learn it. Um, because you're, you're almost programmed to talk about what you've done and ask questions about what's been happening. And what you have to do, and what the staff do all the time, is talk in the moment. So they talk about what's actually happening, which somebody with Alzheimer's can relate to. I think something to talk about is that we moved her from one Colton care home to another. And that was quite a traumatic and scary thing to do. Um, some people said, oh, you shouldn't move somebody with Alzheimer's. It would be very disruptive and disturbing. But the wonderful thing about Colton is that the uniform is the same, the, tra the, the behavior which is expected is the same. And so it was quite seamless moving from Winchester to Lymington. For us, there was, were so many positives because to a person, every single member of staff who would be looking after mum would be kind, calm, gentle, and always seemed to be enthusiastic to be taking an interest in her, which, of course, when you think about it, one person or even a couple of people at home would never be able to do. Um, so that was always a great comfort to us. I noticed that some relatives do get quite anxious about what are their parents eating and um, quite, you know, the, sm the small stuff, really. But I would say that we didn't have any cause to worry about any of that and so we could concentrate my my visits would always be quality visits because I didn't have to worry about what was happening I knew it would all be fine and so um, 
I could have special time with her. It became more uh, emotional and poignant towards the end where you just, you just knew that these people felt as if mum was their family. They were her family. They were here for her 24 hours and they had her care in their hearts. The day mum died, we kind of knew it was going to be that day and her favourite people were around her and that included my sisters and I but it also included the wonderful carers and when the moment was clearly nearly coming they stepped out of the way and left me on my own with mum which was a real privilege to be with her when she took her last breath. I wanted to pay tribute to the staff, so I wrote a, um, a speech to give at the funeral, which fortunately, because we were able to hold the funeral close to here, five or six of the staff were able to come. And I talked about how they cosseted and cocooned her. And I think that, I mean, I think we know that there is no way mum's life would have continued for such a long time with Alzheimer's had she not been so beautifully cared for and made to feel so special and it made to feel that she was having a nice life. Um, I always used to say, I always used to joke that mum loved to lie in in the morning. My father was an early riser and he would always get us all up and you always felt that mum would have preferred to stay in bed for longer. And of course, here she was able to, and the staff were very tender. They would get her up if they possibly could, um, if she seemed awake enough and sort of up to it. But they were very sensitive, and so quite often she would stay in bed for the morning and then maybe get up for lunch. Um, but that was, the, that was the constancy again, really, the fact that they were so attuned to her. So my message is just one of enormous gratitude, really. At her funeral, um, I gave a little talk about Alzheimer's and mum's years with Alzheimer's for the benefit of the lovely people who came back into her life to pay their respects to the Norma that they remembered. And it was a lovely bringing together of um, a big stage of her life, which was obviously very sad in some ways and challenging, um, but was made altogether more, um, totally more bearable and by the fant fantastic people from Colton Care. <laughs>